happy pride. I am gonna tell my coming out story for the first time and I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous about it. Let's go. If you're new here, my name is Katherine Quinn. I am a 30-something living in New York City and working on Broadway. Last year I worked on How to Dance in Ohio and Chef. This year I'm working on The Great Gatsby on Broadway, other shows TBD. As always, the vlog fam is the first to know about all of these things, so stay tuned. I'm a gay. I'm a gay, I'm a pan, I'm a bi, I'm a queer. Yeah, I, I've always been, I've, I was born this way, uh-huh. And I've never like publicly told this story before. I did publicly come out. I did not publicly come out until I was 30 years old. There were many reasons for this, but the biggest is I was raised in Dallas, Texas in a conservative family. That was predominantly, my extended family is Southern Baptist. So very conservative, very religious, very conservative. And my family means everything to me. I received a lot of messaging in the 90s in this area, in this community, whether it was through church or through the media or from school or wherever, that being gay was bad or being gay was taboo or it was a lifestyle choice or any number of those things, which clearly signaled to me that that was not something that I should have been. And I am also attracted to men. And so I was like, no problem. I'm just gonna push that queer part of me away. I, this way. I have known since I was a child. I have memories from age like eight or nine. One of the reasons I'm really inspired to make this video is because if, several weeks ago I was watching my friends Chris and Clay, they have a channel here, I will link it. But Chris and Clay did their coming out story and I was like, wow, I found it very inspiring as a queer person and heading into Pride Month and I've never taken the time to really share my story. And so I guess the hope is like, you know, the memory of having this on the internet is nice, I guess, but like mostly, the reason that you come out is to help other people and in the event that you are in a community that isn't as welcoming or are very fearful or are unsure of what your sexuality is, listen, we're still learning, but I would say that I was uncomfortable with what label to put on myself until, I mean, I'm still not fully comfortable, but I would say like really, really uncomfortable until 30 two, like two years ago, like it took a long time. I found being fluid exceptionally confusing because there was seriously zero bisexual representation growing up, except for like Alex from the OC with her eyeliner, you know, was that Megan Fox? And then Tila Tequila, which was like hypersexualized. I'm a bisexual. Oh. Either way, that was not presented as something that we like wanted to be. And it also was always like, oh, it's just like a step on the road to like being fully gay. I am fully gay and also I'm bi, you know? If you are in a conservative community, being queer is not just sex, it's also love. Like it really is. Why are we telling little girls and little boys that they're gonna be a heartbreaker or that they're gonna like, whatever. It's like, you're not trying to sexualize that child. Like relationships are a part of life. And in my universe, there's a world in which I have a relationship with a non-binary person, someone who identifies as female, male. It's fluid and it's just the way I naturally am. There was always a sense of knowing. However, comma, grew up going to a Christian school until sixth grade. I actually had a sixth grade teacher who was out and we always like, it was whispered about not in a bad way, it just was something that we didn't really publicly talk about. But this teacher is legend. This teacher is like, that was po amazing positive representation. And also she is like a little more butch. And so I didn't see myself necessarily in her as much as I like revered her as a human and teacher. So I still like didn't have like, I didn't have the representation that I was like really, really seeking. Then I went to an all girls school, which if you really wanna mess with someone's head when they're queer, send them to an all girls school. Of course, this was not like intentional and whatever. And honestly, all that it really did was make me double down on masking super, 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 super hard. I think I was so petrified of being found out. I mean, I still had not fully admitted it to myself. I didn't fully admit it to myself until late teenage years, like college. Maybe, maybe the end of high school, but not even. Like I hadn't kissed a girl through all of high school, none of that none of it. And I was into guys. So it was just like, fine, I'm just gonna have my boyfriends and just tamp down that other part of me and maybe it will go away. And maybe it's just like my hormones are raging. I'm a kid, I don't know. Everyone experiments, college happened. And I basically, I'm sober now. And in college, I definitely used booze, which I, I think this is sort of tale as old as time, booze as like a conduit to like explore. Like, oh, I was wasted. I just like, 
made out with that girl. It's fine. Also, mom, sorry if you're watching this, maybe don't. So that sort of like was the beginning of an exploration. Still had boyfriends. There have been two points so far in my life that have felt the most psychologically tumultuous while I've been figuring this out. One was in my college years and then one was actually right around the time I turned 30. It does get better, but also, life's gonna keep throwing you curveballs. So college was tumultuous. For a solid decade, it was just like, is my attraction to men compulsive heterosexuality or compet? So like the thing in which you're conditioned essentially to think that you like men when in fact you don't really like men, but like it has societal approval and we know all of the like, I'm autistic and so like I observe patterns and understand what the world wants of me and I can produce that. So I was like, is my attraction to men an attraction to men or is it legitimate? Is my attraction to men compet and just not like understanding what my actual attraction is because I haven't really explored it yet or am I attracted to men and I'm attracted to women? But again, bisexual representation, not a thing. Fluidity, not a thing. Just like no representation. I'm like, when do we hit the era where I'm like literally watching Shannon Beveridge and Ingrid Nielsen? Honestly, that was a little later. That was like 2014, 2015, right? Which is like crazy. Shannon's younger than I am. And I think Ingrid is as well, but they're like peers. Like I think Shannon's like two years younger than I am. Anyway, we can get there in a second. I was just petrified of my sexuality and still basically denying that part of myself unless I was drunk, which is super unhealthy. I don't recommend that. Kept having boyfriends in college. Then the summer after college ended, I worked a cater waiter shift and met this gorgeous person. We just like sort of hit it off and started talking and it was a meet cute and that person became my first girlfriend. And I learned a lot. If you are first experiencing your queerness, there's a good chance that the first person that you date you're gonna be, look back and be like, what? And listen, this person is wonderful. She's fantastic. I'm so great that she was like my first girlfriend and that it all happened. And it, there was a lot that was really beautiful. And also, I was so young. I was so young. You're young. You're so young. <sighs> but it was terrifying and it was secretive. And I shared it with my friends. I was doing theater at the time, which is obviously a pretty welcoming community, but even so you feel so nervous. Like I was just petrified. I had received so much harmful messaging about like being gay is gross. And so I was like so nervous to even share a dressing room with girls. But like over the time that I was doing theater, I met women who were openly queer and I was sharing dressing rooms with them and no one treated them any differently and nobody was weird about. And so I was like, okay. It was just like the beginning of re rewiring like what is normal and like what is okay. I went away and did a contract in Japan. Then I worked on a cruise ship and I had one week between working in Japan and being on the cruise ship and I knew I wanted, I needed to see my family and also I wanted to go to New York to see my girlfriend who had actually moved from Texas to New York during my Japan contract. And at this point I had been with this girl for like eight months. So I was like, okay, I have got to tell my mom. I'm gonna tell my mom, I'm gonna tell my mom, I'm gonna tell my mom, I'm self-sufficient. I am paying for my life now if something bad happens. Like, because I think it's really, really, really vulnerable and hard to come out in any circumstance. And I know that like coming out is sort of like out of vogue now, but in a lot of communities, it's still a necessary and helpful thing. And like the reason that I'm doing this is so that someone who might be in my position in a community that's less welcoming again, has someone that they can look at to be like, okay, that person, they made it through and it's all okay. There is a lot of fear of coming out when you are financially beholden to someone else, like your parents, or when you are living in their home and you don't know how they're gonna respond, how that's gonna change your relationship, how that stress is going to impact your day to day, how that will impact their relationship with you, what you will and won't be allowed to do, who you may and may not be allowed to see, like it impacts a lot. And so I think that's one of the reasons I waited so long to like explore and figure out what was going on. It is the reason why I was truly deathly afraid of telling my mom. I think I had already told my sister and she had known for a while um, and she was fabulous and really cool about it. The week between Japan and the cruise, I was in the car with my mom and I asked her if she would love me no matter what. And she said, yes. I said, do you mean it? And she said, of course. And I said that I had a girlfriend and she was just like, okay. The conversation was not what I had hoped, which is very common and especially was at that time, because it's now been 12 years since that conversation. It was tough. What I learned from that conversation is that she was not ready to have that conversation, even though I was. I didn't have enough confidence and comfort in myself to hold space for her feelings as well. And part of what is really 
challenging about coming out, particularly to a community that may not be as well educated or um, open, is that you have to be in a secure enough place to not only be vulnerable and open up, but also have enough answers and therefore have done enough self-reflection that you know how to talk about it with the people you love. That was one of the most challenging things. And at that time it was so vulnerable and so raw that I did not have space or the wherewithal to manage her feelings and or educate her in the way that I needed to while continuing to feel safe and seen and confident in my own very newly discovered sexuality. That was that, broke up with my girlfriend after the cruise or in the midst of my cruise contract moved to New York City dated men and women when I got to the city and at that time I was like oh well this is that relationship was probably that was my favorite relationship I've ever had I might just be straight up gay I might just be completely lesbian maybe bisexual was a stepping stone for me but oh no 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 regrettably no my next two relationships were with men lovely wonderful I well yeah we all have showmances and dalliances, but my two proper relationships were both with men and I loved them. The last boyfriend that I had was very, it was a very serious relationship. He was very cool. I told him from the moment that I thought it was gonna turn romantic with him, I said, hey, there's something that you need to know. I'm bisexual and I just wanna like offer that information in case we need to have a conversation or what you think. And literally from day one, he was so incredible about it and so open and not threatened and fantastic. So that was awesome. We dated for three years. It was very, 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 very serious talked a lot about marriage, talked a lot about getting engaged, talked a lot about the future, got a dog together. He's gone now, I can't demonstrate him. And that was the second point at which my relationship with my sexuality just in these conversations about marriage, about weddings, about rings, about all of this stuff, my panic about, oh my God, wait, what if I am closeted? Or what if, I mean, part of me is still closeted. I never, I had never publicly come out ever I, and and after my first relationship post my first girlfriend with with a man i went back to my mom and i said hey it's really really important for you to know that just because i've dated i'm dating a man now does not mean that that relationship wasn't real like i was always crystal clear about that i felt like the walls were sort of closing in on me that was the most anxiety ridden i've ever been towards the end of that relationship it was a very heterosexual relationship in every possible way which is just to say that like gender roles were very real the like potential in-law situation was very real. It was like a relationship that society wanted to love. Like people liked us together, people liked the look of it. You know what I mean? It was just like easy in that way. Holding hands on the street, people are gonna smile at you and be happy about it. Which is not something that always exists for queer relationships. And there's a lot of privilege. It's straight privilege. It's like pretty privilege, but hetero. And there was a lot that was really appealing about that. And the idea of like getting the big shiny ring and like having the big gorgeous wedding and like the photos and, and societal validation and all of that. There's something really intoxicating about all of that. And that's not to say that there weren't real feelings there because I was very deeply in love with this person as well. However, comma, we just had problems. It wasn't, it was not meant to be. When we hit June, the third year that we were together. So I remember the two prides, the first two prides that we were together, I just felt like a phony. Like I felt so lost and alone. I went down to the pride parade in New York. I had a job that took me out of um, the city in June and I always had to go through the pride parade to like get there. And I just felt like waving through a window, like on the outside, always looking in. Like I just felt so, it's like who the are you like it was so confusing because I loved this man so much and also felt like I was just neglecting this huge part of myself all at the same time and it was just like incredibly confusing and tough and I still hadn't properly come out we're approaching the end of year three in this relationship a cousin of mine in this same super conservative family came out and talked about the hell that they went through trying to pray the gay away and trouble, you know, coming to terms with it with their family and all of this stuff. They're younger. And I was just like, they didn't have to be the first. And I felt so guilty. And I know it wasn't my responsibility, but it was like coming out in our, in our family is so hard. <laughs> coming out in a conservative family is so hard. Coming out in a family that believes it's a lifestyle choice or thinks that being gay is gross or will just spit out Bible verses at you when you're trying to like share a part of your soul that like, why would we choose it? It's hard. Like now I would because it's amazing. But like 
at the time, like, it was not that it, it was not safe for us to be that way. And I just felt this immense guilt and sadness that I had had like queer relationships and could have opened a safe space for my cousin and hadn't and they were brave first. And that really inspired me to be like, okay, I told my boyfriend at the time, my ex, I was like, hey, I wanna come out publicly. And he was super supportive. And I said, I need to tell your parents first. So I did and like, they were like, why are we doing this? Bless them. They were like generous about it, but a little confused. Came out online and I had a conversation again with my mom, my immediate family that I was gonna do this eight years after the first time I came out. And again, it did not go well. And at this point I did have more confidence and it was devastating and it created a big rift in our relationship. It was honestly awful. Yeah, like even thinking about that time makes me want to sort of just like crumble. And I'm not saying this to shame her. I love my mom and I would not be sharing this story if there weren't a happy ending. So I'm going to share where we've gotten to now, which is an actual miracle. I remember meeting with other friends um, of mine from Texas and like they would be like, oh my gosh, my mom used to be like so anti-gay and so weird about my queerness. And now like my mom literally just did the pride parade. And I was like, that's cute, would never happen to my mom. And to be clear, spoiler, my mom's not marching in any parades. However, two days ago was June 1st and she did text me happy pride with a rainbow emoji. So we've made very good progress. So anyway, long story short, for reasons of queerness and also reasons well beyond queerness, primarily those, I ended the relationship with my ex-boyfriend. Kind of was like dealing with the grief of that very big thing and thinking that was the rest of my life and the world shut down. The world shut down, I turned 30. It was just like a freaking crazy time. Like so much happened. Pandemic happened. I had moved into this apartment, barely. It was empty. I was alone with my dog. And I was like, what do, I mean, do I stay alone in this apartment while the world shuts down? Do I fly home to Texas to my mom who I'm not totally speaking with right now because things had blown up so badly however many months prior? And that didn't really feel safe either, but I, sort of made a fight or flight decision on the day that we entered like proper, proper lockdown, March 17th here, 2020. Got on a flight that day with my dog, went to Texas. And then over the course of the four months I was in Texas, my mom and I unpacked everything, everything. I honestly wish that we could make a video together talking about this experience. And honestly, maybe we will someday. I don't know if she would ever be open to doing that. Mom, if you're watching, let's talk about it. Something that I think was really helpful with my mom was like, I mean, at this point I had had eight, nine years. I had the language to be like, I can't always manage your emotions about this and take care of myself at the same time while explaining this. However, after the eight or nine years, I was in a place where I was like, however, I can educate. I do have the space to educate about these things, answer the questions that I have answers to and open up about this. And I think that I can handle that. And so we would just take it with baby steps and like, it was really, really gentle and it was really honest. It's very hard for parents to not become defensive or I th I'm sure there's some guilt in there too, all of those things. And so it's just like about seeing your parent as a human being, recognizing like, my mom was always like, you just have to understand the way I grew up. And there is a lot to that. Like her world was very, very different. Um, and she was taught a lot of very different things. I'm really glad that like we have expanded our worldviews over the last 30 years, like as a society and also with me and her, my generation within the family, some of it, we have blossomed as well. So anyway, what I want to offer is that my mom and I now have an incredible relationship. She has been so kind with Tia and my previous female partner. My mom wished me happy pride on June 1st. I feel like we're still, like she's so kind and generous about it. It's not, it's still not the same as if I were dating a man. It, I don't get the same kinds of questions. I don't necessarily get the same kind of excitement, but also there's some liberation in that. I am not a person that wants to get married. It's just not something that I want for my life. I also don't want kids. And if I were with a man, I would be dealing with all of that relationship escalation questioning all the time. And now that I'm with a non-binary person, nobody's asking. And honestly, that part is great. I didn't mean to be quite so long-winded about this, but obviously it was like a 12 year journey to get here. And really only again, like in the last couple of years have I been like, okay, I journaled, I went to therapy. I did so many things to try to make sense of why I felt so trapped at the end of my last relationship. No, well, not last relationship, two relationships ago now. And I've just come to terms with the fact that it's fluid 
and it is very person based for me like I fall in love with a person I am attracted to a person I have no idea like is there a percentage of what no I have no idea I have no idea I will say I prefer being in relationships with women or not men T is not binary I've also had the great gift of being with queer people who came out a lot earlier like Tia and my last partner and I've learned so much from them too and I've learned so much from my friends. My friends have been extraordinary. They've just been really incredible and generous through this entire process of sorting my sexuality. Whether you are young or old, whether you are in your teens or younger or your 20s or 30s, whether you feel safe right now or not, there is never a right or wrong time to like figure this out about yourself. There are no rules here. We're still in a society where it is tougher to be queer, even though it's a more welcoming uh, world in general. There's still a long ways to go and so you need to get off. Are you done? I hope this provides some hope. If you had told me at 12 years old that I would be living in New York City, working on Broadway and have a female partner or have a non-binary partner, I wouldn't have known what non-binary was but could have been openly queer and that my mom would be okay with it at this point. There, I just straight up would not have believed you and my life is beautiful and I'm so grateful and it is beyond my dreams and it was beyond what I could have imagined for myself as a kid and <laughs> bisexuality is real and queerness is complicated and if your parents or family are having a hard time coming around I know it is truly heartbreaking but like give them time exercise patience as much as you can and staying safe you know with yourself and you're loved also, there's more queer people than you think. People come out of the woodworks when you come out and they're like, hi, I've never publicly come out, but also I'm a bisexual and my husband is super chill about it or like whatever, like they're everywhere. The gays, we're everywhere, it's great. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up here. I talked much longer than I anticipated, but I'm really happy to have shared my coming out story with you as long and storied as it is, and I'm sure it will ever evolve and continue to evolve. Happy, happy pride to all of my queers. If you have a question and if you need a safe space or if you found anything useful or if you have a similar story, you want to share your story, leave a comment down below. As always, I invite you to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at is Katherine Quinn. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.